So today we're going to talk about the relative pronouns and relative clothes. So let's see this and let's watch this video. This teacher is explaining about the relative clauses and what are they and how we use them in dependent clause or independent clauses. Okay, so let's start. Marianne, hello, Rosie. Hi, David. So today we're going to talk about a special kind of dependent clause, which again is a kind of clause that can't be a sentence on its own. So he, he said for us that he's going to talk about the dependent clauses, okay? So let's see what is the dependent clause. Called a relative clause. So a relative clause is a dependent clause that starts with a relative pronoun. So, uh -huh. so relative clauses, a dependent clause that starts with a relative pronoun. So dependent means that it can stand or cannot stand alone. A sentence cannot stand alone. It does not give me or does not give the hearer the full meaning, the full meaning or the complete sense. It can stand alone the dependent clause. The independent clause can stand in all, alone. So, dependent is the opposite word of independent. Dependent is the opposite of independent. Independent, it can stand alone. And dependent can't stand alone. Okay, guys? So focus on this point. It's very important to know that we have two kinds of clauses, dependent and independent. Dependent yeah. and independent. Okay, so relative clauses is kind of the dependent clauses that starts with what? A relative pronoun. A relative pronoun. Mm -hmm pronoun. So we're going to know what are the relative pronouns. How many are they? Okay. So okay. let's see. Okay. So a relative pronoun is a word like who or that or which. Aha. Uh -huh. So these are relative pronouns. Someone of you, I'm sure that he's going to ask me, teacher, but we we know that who, which, where, when, we use them as a what? A quest, a word question, okay? They are WH question words, صح? Yeah. You're gonna yeah, say yeah. or ask me this question. Okay. But, but focus with me in English, in English, these words, these WH words, we use them as a question words as and as a relative closes, a relative pronouns means that who it has two meaning. Yeah, it has two meaning. Who it has two meaning. Who oh, as a question, you are asking about someone, uh, or we uh, we use it as uh, to ask about people, um, and it's used to as a what? A relative pronoun. It means a lady. Okay? The person who I yes, love no is my mother. The person who I love. The person who I love. Who I love. Who here? It's a relative pronoun. But I want to use it as a what? A, a WH question word. Who is this? Who is talking to me? Who is telling me the answer? Who? So who here? I use it as a what? A question word. Question word, yeah. Okay. So according to okay. the sentence, according to the context, I can say if this word is a relative pronoun or WH question word. Okay, so 
let's see here. We have relative pronoun. They are how many? Three here. Who for person? That for both person yeah. or, or, or people and things in which for things, places, animals, and so on. So let's see. Whose or where that like like any pronoun. Huh. Who's and where? Who is for possession? Possession. Possession Ilihu Ash or sorry, possession. Possession, possessive. Do you remember the possessive? Possessive yeah. something belongs to yeah. you, belongs to your teacher, your teacher, and so on. Who is your thing? Possession? Your thing. Possession. Where are the something belongs to you. you. Something it's mine. To you. Where for the place? Possession. Where for the place, Emmys? Where for places, yes. Where for places. Now, substituting for another part of the sentence. So these are the what? The relative pronouns who, that, which, who's, where. Who, that, which, who's. Uh, it's one one. It's, it's, not one one. it's not used as a relative pronoun. Or yeah, it's used for a relative as a relative pronoun, but wait a minute, we're going to see more and more. Okay? And to get okay. no more and more in okay. this video. So for example, Harry Potter, yeah. also known as <laughs> Boy Who Lives. Boy Who Lives. Yeah, that's my Dumbledore. You can see in this little snippet. Uh -huh. So see here, the boy who lived, the boy who lived, aha, uh -huh. the boy here is, is the subject of the sentence. Who lived Person. here is a relative close, Person. relative close here. Fine. If I, if I delete the boy and I just said, who lived? Who lived? So does the, does it, or does this sentence or clause give me a full meaning? Who lived? No, no. No. <coughs> Type, what kind of clauses is it? Yellow plus two for the one who knows. Come on. Who lived? What kind of clauses? Is it dependent or independent? Independent. So, see here, he said for us, relative clause is what? Dependent clause. Can't stand alone. Can't stand alone. Okay? So, who lived here is what? Is a dependent clause that can't stand alone. The boy who lived here, this is a what? A dependent independent. clause. Independent. Well, we need a complement for this independent clause. Okay? So, the boy, the boy here, the subject, and after the subject, directly, we use what, or it's used who. The who is used here because the boy is a person. person. The who, yeah. who, the relative pronoun who is used for people, is used for people. people. Okay, guys? Okay. Who is used for people? The boy who lived. The boy who lived, the boy who lived. And after the relative pronoun here, we have the verb. The person who lived, the person who uh, who is talking right now is Miss Baraa. The teacher who is talking is Miss Baraa. Or is giving us a class is Miss Baraa. 
So after the subject, we use directly the relative pronoun. So don't mix between relative pronoun and relative clause. Relative pronouns, they are here, who, that, which, whose, where, when, and so on. So these are the relative pronouns, guys. And the relative clause, it means the close the sentence, okay? The close, the part of the sentence that has what? That start with relative pronoun. That starts with relative pronoun. So who lived here is the relative close, okay? So don't okay. mix between relative pronoun and relative close. Let's go ahead. <laughs> Is subbing in for boy, right? So, so it is behaving like a pronoun, a relative pronoun. And so we've got this here, who lived. The boy lived on its own could be a sentence. Uh, but who lived cannot be. Well, who lived is... Huh. So, the boy lived on its own could be a sentence. The boy lived on its own, on its own, could be a sentence, but, uh, but who lived? But who lived can't be, can't be a sentence, can't, can't stand alone because it's a dependent clause and dependent clauses can't stand alone, can't stand alone. Cannot. Mm. Well, who lived is, is describing the boy. So right now, all of this together is just a noun phrase, but who lived within this noun phrase is irrelevant. Ah, uh, so what did he say? What did he say? The boy- Noun phrase. Lived... Yes. Noun phrase, noun phrase. The boy who lived is a noun phrase. This noun phrase is a relative close, okay? This noun phrase is a relative close. Who lived? Who lived? Left who is lived? object. So it's a noun phrase. It's just a noun phrase, but who lived within this noun phrase is irrelevant. Mm -hmm. So all of it is it's a noun phrase, the boy who lived, and the relative clause is a part of this relative clause. The boy here, we describe the boy that who lived in Dumbledore, for example, okay? The boy who lived. So we are describing the boy. We are describing the boy with using what? The relative clause who lived. So we need to find a store that sells the new Willamette cold brew coffee ice cream. I heard it's really good. So all of this together is a sentence. This is definitely. So here we need to find a store that sells. This is the next example, okay? Another example. So we need to find a store that sells the new Walmart could brew coffee. Aha, uh -huh. so we have here a sentence, a complex or compound sentence that has more than one verb in one subject, okay? This is a dependent. So all of this together is a sentence. This is definitely a sentence. We need to find a store that sells the new Willamette cold brew coffee ice cream. Like indisputably that is a sentence. We have our subject, we, we have a verb, we, um, and then the object of uh, of need is to find. Uh -huh. So, see here, we have to find a store. The store is described as what? The store that sells the new Walmart. Aha. Uh -huh. So, that we use it with what? To describe the store that we want to 
say goodbye. To buy one or a particular kind of sweeties and coffee, okay? So, for example, in Arabic, when you want to say, Mama, أنا بدي أشتري الشوكولاتس اللي من عند المحل اللي بيع اللي بيبيع الشوكولا مع الفراولة مثلا المحل يلي بيبيع so so this is as it, Arabic is a language as in like English okay so all languages has these kinds of rules. If I want to describe the store that I want to buy from it, one kind or a special kind of coffee, chocolates, some foods, and so on, I'm going to describe it with use relative clause. The relative clause here is what? That sells the new Walmart and so on. Okay, so that sells is the relative clause. Dependent. Close. So as that you asked me, so is this this is this sentence dependent close? No, it's not all the sentence dependent close. All the sentence is independent close. Yeah. But the part that starts from that sells the new walnut and so on. Hey, to come to Jumla. This is a relative close. Okay, this is a relative. Close. That is dependent close. Can't stand alone. I can't say, I can't say that sells the new Walmart. Like in Arabic, you are with your mother, you are shopping, you are go, yeah, uh, uh, that you are, um, want to buy, yeah. Uh, one uh, a special kind of cakes, and you're gonna say, "Ah, هذا اللي ببيع حلويات مميزة." So your mom is gonna ask you, "طب أيا يا ماما يعني إيش قصدك مثلاً؟ شو أيا محل اللي ببيع اللي ببيع؟" It's okay. طب شو يعني مش فاهمة عليك. Ah, so there is a misunderstand. لأنه أنت ما أعطيت معنى كامل. You didn't give a full answer or you didn't complete the sentence. The sentence that you are saying or the close that you are saying is not giving the hearer the full meaning, the full answer. Okay? So this is the relative close. It's a complement of the sentence. The relative clause is a complement of the sentence. I'm describing the store that I want to buy from it. Okay? Okay. So it's too, too easy. We yeah. need to find a store. Aha. Uh -huh. So which store? Which store? Yalla, who wants to answer me? We need to find a store. That's it. That's it. Great job. Yeah, that sells yeah, the new yeah. homemade cod brew coffee. Yeah, coffee yeah. With what? Ah, uh, coffee with ice, silly coffee ice. Okay. So this is the second, the second sentence that have a relative close. Okay. This is a full sentence, Simis. Yeah, this is a yeah. full sentence. We need to find a store. And which store? I'm going to ask you. You're going to say that so the new Walmart could brew coffee eyes. Okay? Let's okay. It. And then the object of, uh, of need is to find a store that sells the new Willamette cold brew coffee ice cream. But we're focusing on this yellow part. Mm -hmm. So um, that is substituting in for a store. That's what that relative pronoun is representing. And then we have that sells the new. So we've got store that sells, right? So that is our subject here. Sells is the verb. The new Willamette cold brew coffee ice cream is the object of sells. 
and everything in yellow here, all this yellow text, is our relative clause. It cannot stand on its own as a sentence. You could not just have that self cannot stand on its own as a sentence. You could not just have that sells the new thing in yellow here, all this yellow text is our relative clause. It cannot stand on it. So what did he say? What did he say? It relative. can't it can't Yalla, who wants stand to answer? Below. Stand below. Stand below. Yes, great job. It can't stand alone. It can't stand on its own as a sentence. The relative clause can't stand on its own. Okay? Yeah. It's not a full oh, sentence, yeah. like in Arabic. Okay? So it's too easy. Just, you know, just understand it. Don't memorize things without understanding. This is a rule in teaching, okay? Understand what is in front of you, and you're gonna can you're gonna uh, be able to say full meaningful sentences and bright meaningful sentences with using relative clauses, okay? So a relative clause is a, a part mm. of this sentence. Yeah. You could not just have that sells the new Willamette cold brew coffee ice cream. On its own, that doesn't work because the very presence of this um, relative pronoun requires more stuff to go on. Mm -hmm. Well, let's make things a little bit more complicated. The woman who always wore a red hat came into the cafe every Sunday. So this sentence. So this is a more complex sentence and more complicated sentence is mere Complicated, difficult, okay? So the woman who always wore a red hat came into the coffee every Sunday. This is a complex sentence. It has more than one subject and more one than one verb. The woman. So the woman, okay? So you can ask me, uh -huh. which woman, teacher? Which woman? That woman, that woman. Uh oh, teacher, what do you mean with the woman? Which woman? The woman that she is giving us the class, the woman that we have, uh, do you mean that uh, the woman means our mothers? Do you mean the teachers? Do you mean what, which were, mother? Which, which uh, woman? Red hat came. Great job. Yeah, Great yeah, job. So the woman who always wore. So the woman us, who always wore, yeah. Yes. Who always wore a red hat? So, so. Who always wear a red hat? This relative clause is used to describe whom? To describe whom? The woman. The woman. Great the job. Woman. So after the woman, who is the relative pronoun? And after the relative pronoun, we have the verb of the sentence, the verb. Who always wore? Wore, past tense of wear, okay? The woman yeah. who always wore a red hat came into the coffee every Sunday. So here it's a complicated sentence, but it's not required from you to say sentences like that. Okay? Just know it. So that's it for today. Okay, guys? Okay. Okay. Thank you.